Good evening, everybody at YouTube. Once again, it's the three middle-aged dudes just bullshitting about nothing. I am the Reverend. The theme here. In Grey Mouse 1. Yep, we are back. This is the Geek Week in Review. We're going to cover a little bit of video game news because, well, we kind of missed last week because real life happened. All right. With that said, we're going to just go ahead and jump right into it. A lot of video game news over last week and this week. We're just going to go ahead and run over some of the more juicy ones or the juicy tidbits that have come down the pike. Uh, for instance, in GameSpot, at GameSpot, excuse me, uh, Hideo Kojima was, uh, was interviewed where he pretty much uh, went out of his way to, well, I guess – reflect or uh, expose a few details and they were very very few as far as the new game that he was talking about um, basically he he had explained that his new production studio Kojima Productions that they were building a brand new game from the ground up they didn't have a game engine or anything and that when he was pressed for a description of the game he pretty much offered that it would be something in the vein of the division <laughs> and Uncharted. What that means exactly, if you ask me, it can mean anything. The floor is open, guys. I mean, what, what are your thoughts? So I'm very happy that Hideo Kojima is going to be returning to video game making and into the industry and all that. And I do understand that you can't spoil too much. E3 is around the corner. Um, but, yeah, to give such vague details at this time it's like all right yeah you're dangling the fucking carrot in front of us we understand but at the same time yeah that's gonna and that's the perfect bait because everyone's gonna be like we want more and it's just speculation at this point yeah, yeah. i'm kind of in the same boat with the, with this you know uh i think the the news came out when um kojima said that the new symbol for kojima productions that's he said he mentioned a couple of things, saying that that's the new character of the, of the new game inside that symbol. And uh, I mean, we did get. I think we got the name of of the of the character. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Yeah, uh, um, but but it's you know it's the same thing. What the theme was saying, you know, it's a carrot <laughs> angling, you know, in front. But we understand from E three right now. And yes, finally, Kojima can do what the fuck he wants, when the fuck he wants, without none of that Konami bullshit. So <laughs> I, I am happy that he's, you know, hey, I'm ready to play some Kojima games. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously something that everybody's going to be excited about. I'm just, the where I'm at is that, you know, it, I, I like the fact, really the only real detail that he kind of gave everybody <clears throat> was the fact that he mentioned that there wasn't any real game engine built mm -hmm. and that he was building this from scratch. Um, which means, guess what, folks? You're probably not going to see the first Kojima game for another two and a half, three years. All right, if that's going to be the case. Um, but his description of something like a mix between The Division and the and Uncharted, <laughs> I'm sorry, that is, that's like saying it's going to be a game. And <laughs> when pressed for when pressed for details, this is a direct quote. There might be gun shooting. There might not be guns though. <laughs> what kind of shit? Yeah, what kind of shit is that? So it's gonna have guns, or it's gonna be an adventure with swords and shields well, and the, okay, wait. You know the way I see it, I see this as a a positive thing, especially what? since. We we don't know the game engine at all. They're not using the Unreal for. No, like that he doesn't know. That's what I'm saying. So that that's a plus <laughs> to me, being that he's building this game from. Why could he just up. say, "All right, okay, sorry to interrupt," but why couldn't he say, "Okay, sorry, all right, bitches, I'm back." Fuck Konami, let's make some games. That's really all that he had to say at this point. I mean, he, he's saying that in in more or less words. Yeah, it is. But I don't want him to say those exact words. Fuck Konami, I'm back. <laughs> well, yeah, everybody wants to say it here. Yeah. And I think everybody's everybody wants to sit there and say it in chorus with him. In fact. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm just at this juncture. I can't shake the feeling, the same sort of feeling that I got watching games like fucking Dragon's Lair or Space Ace sitting there saying, 
what's really behind this fucking game? And knowing that I had some quarters in my hand, how many fucking quarters are you going to take from me, Kojima? Is he just going to be one? Is it going to be two? Is it going to be fucking four? Or are you going to be one of those fucking machines that's going to ask for a fucking credit card? Seriously, man. That's all we want to know because those details don't tell me anything. All right. I mean, it's it. Was there anything really? Like, to play your games. Yeah, sounds, I know. That sounds like what I think the NX is going to do. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> you guys, and I'm dead fucking serious. Look, I want to also think with the NX. Yeah, you're going to have a. It's going to be like the um the credit card swipe <laughs> in order to play your shit. You're going to have to always be online. No, for no. Swipe. That's going to be PlayStation Five. No, that's 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 going to be EA's console when they finally come out. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking <laughs> of, all right. EA, uh, in a recent article, was asked to discuss the PS4, the the possibility of working with the PS4 Neo, and the new Xbox One upgradable hardware, and they had a few choice words. Um, basically, their their big thing was our business model is so much more diverse now than it has been historically. And the notion of a console cycle becomes somewhat irrelevant. Okay, and then pretty much EA went out of their way and they were like, unlike other developers saying, look, this is a pain in the ass. This fucking sucks for everybody <laughs> um, to go ahead and happen to, to handle this in the middle of the console generation or in the middle of what would traditionally be known as a console generation. EA was like, well, we make shit for everything, so... It doesn't fucking matter to us. Look at our big fucking publisher dick. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much what they said. Uh, thoughts, guys? <laughs> Fuck EA. That's basically it for me. That's just... What else can I input after that? Yeah. I, I mean, there really isn't... Uh, Grey Mouse? <laughs> you no, know, he already did it. He was already doing this. Remember, this is a video, Grey Mouse. There, there's audio along with the video, so the whole sitting there silent thing, just nodding your head, it doesn't help us at all. No. The, you can't sign language. Yeah, exactly. I just spoke it out. Fuck EA. No, e, EA, God, man. I mean, who, who gives them the right to do that shit besides, I mean, nobody. I mean, here's, here's the thing with EA. Uh, generally speaking, they're still one of the biggest publishers out there. They're no longer the biggest third-party publisher. That actually goes over to Activision, where the evilness of Bobby Kotick can go ahead and be felt worldwide. Um, <laughs> and generally speaking, that's that's how that goes. Uh, the, the thing with EA, though, is that they do kind of have a point that they've had their tendrils and, and tentacles of many different things all over the fucking landscape. You know, there isn't there isn't too many games or genres that they that they've touched on, or is there isn't very many platforms that they haven't touched on. Um, it's it's one of those things. It's kind of funny to actually hear um, a publisher out there say that, "Hey, we're not too worried about it." But at the same time, hearing it in such a smug, swarmy way that they do it, it's like, "Well, thank you, EA, for confirming what what sort of big fucking dicks you are," you know. <laughs> Uh, we'll just go ahead and take note of that. Uh, uh, to be completely honest, here's here's the thing about EA. All right, and this is this is the big reason why I'm not a fan of EA, and I haven't been a fan of their modus operandi for I don't know uh, for at least the last twenty years. Um, somebody is going to come along, a developer is going to come along, and they're going to say that they want to develop a game specifically for the Xbox One upgradable hardware or PS4 Neo. And they're going to go ahead and they're going to say, hey, EA, they're going to market it out to people. And EA is going to come along and say, hey, we'll give you money to go ahead and publish this game. It may be successful. It may not be. If it is successful, EA will be like, hey, that's really, really nice. Why don't you let us buy your fucking development studio? And after they decide to go ahead and say, you had a big hit on your hand and they decide to put out a, a sequel, EA will then go out of their way to dismantle the studio, fire 95% of the fucking employees, and then keep a handful of the people around so that they can go ahead and work on other fucking titles for them. 
Yeah. Well, with with EA, you know, I, I still 100% disagree with for upgradable um, components on um, Xbox One and PlayStation 4, simply because you just touched briefly on something that a lot of people don't realize. Eventually, what's going to happen is that these games are going to end up being on that exclusive hardware. That they're gonna, they're not going to. They, right now, they say, "Oh, yeah, we'll have both." We'll have both um, data or um, – um, I can't even think of the word right now. Um, both platforms covered. Both codes. or The code for the game, we have a Neo code and we have a PlayStation 4 code. Eventually, it's going to come to a point to where everything, all the new games are only going to be released on the Neo code. Yeah. And it's going to happen. I mean, it's just – it's inevitable. You know, it's going to happen. And like you said, EA is notorious for – scooping up these these uh you know these companies and dismantling them and then putting them on a, a project and it completely fails yeah you know oh or, or they'll they'll go out of their way and then like I said they'll they'll assign the sequel to one of their in-house development studios or something like that uh it's that it's song is song is all this time and i'm not talking about beauty and the beast i'm just talking about ugly 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 altogether you know um but, I mean, but with that though, I mean, that that's just uh, a bigger company eating up smaller, buying out other smaller companies. It happens all the time. It doesn't just happen in gaming. It happens in in real in you know real yeah, life. But okay, yeah. you still continue the fucking company. Crap. You but still the ninety five percent of worker. Look, any company that takes over another, yes, this happens. One company takes over another. They start laying off motherfuckers and basically gets rid of the whole meaning. Of you of company, uh, yeah, exactly. So it's something fucking different. It's not the same. Sometimes it's better. Most of the times it's for worse. And people will not tolerate that, especially in gaming nowadays. We need better shit. We need more. We don't need anyone trying to monopolize anymore and have less, and then fucking the industry. We just don't yeah. need that anymore. Yeah. yeah. And and the thing about it is that unlike before, when um people didn't have access to the internet to actually see the backgrounds of these of these companies right. and actually see who was attached, you know, behind the labels and everything else. Um, sure, you always you you always had like the um what was it the instruction manual with the company names and stuff like that as far as who worked on the game. But even now, with, with folks being able to sit there and see who actually worked behind the curtain and put things together, it's, it's really kind of tragic because you could sit there if, okay, if you're new, if you're a younger person who, or somebody who's maybe only gotten into gaming over the last, I don't know, decade or so. I'm already. Uh, oh, you know, ever since the, the, the turn of the millennium. Um, you may not know the straight up murderous fucking if you're younger than the game boy yeah you you may not know the murderous legacy of ea because pretty much the reason why they were became one of the biggest third party developers in the world is because they were eating up development companies left and right i mean straight pac-manning motherfuckers <laughs> yep without fucking courtesy of the fucking power pellet, okay? They were just eating shit up. Right? Um, and what happened was that when they, they sat there and ate, ate the fucking things up, it was just like the ghosts. They would sit there, they would eat the ghosts up, fucking, they would shit out, you know, those eyes would run back to their home box and shit. And but they ran out of outfits. Yeah, that was it, you know? They, they, there, there are so many fucking development companies and 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 studios that have fallen by the wayside because they've been eaten up by EA. Once well, once they've had a hit, EA sat there, took the sequel, handed it over to one of their in-house guys, fired over ninety percent of the fucking staff in that in that development studio, and then kept a, a handful of dudes just for their fucking teams. Well, I mean, is is the fact that they're eating up good studios that would be that would pretty much? I mean, well, any game studio. And the thing is, could have had chances to bring more variety of games. The thing is, though, I mean, the thing is, though, with with being a, a a developer, is this is that you want to create a game, make a hit, pretty much do a hit and run 
to make your millions. You know, you, you create two or three games that are outstanding games, and then you want somebody like EA or, or uh, uh, all these other companies, uh, Ubisoft, all these third-party companies to come and buy your, uh, buy your company, and then you're off with a golden parachute. Hey, I just sold all my property IP to, uh, to whomever, and for $300 million, I mean, you're set now. Well, if you're, if, if you're one of the, if you're one of the developers that actually sits there and thinks, uh, thinks like a corporate person, not like a creative person. Um, yeah, sure. Turn a quick buck. All but right. That's what's happening though. But, that, that's, that's what it's like. It's almost like these new developers are not, you know, all they want is that one hit wonder or two hit wonder. And then they're trying to sell off their, I mean, cause you can't just blame EA. EA is just doing what a corporation, I, I'm not, EA is evil. I'll just go ahead and say that. EA is evil. The but main thing about EA, though, is that hang they on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The thing about EA is I understand they're evil, but they're a corporation as well, and they're going to eat up these uh, these small companies that make you know a hit. But the problem with it is there's no problem with buying a company that has a hit, but it's what you do when it becomes your IP. And for example, what EA is notorious for doing is firing 98% of the people and leaving one or two guys that were probably not even really involved in the IP in the first place in position to go on, you know, their own, uh, their own first party game. And, and that's what's happening. Now the, the, let me, let me just say this. All right. The evil part of EA and this is really kind of like the um, uh, reflection of the grand problem with a lot of the video game industry as a whole. And it's one of the things I've said before, and all of us have said, have stated many, many times in, in, in our other videos, is that the biggest problem with the video game industry right now is that it is a creative process that's being run by bean counters. All right, these are guys who just sit there and care about the fucking bottom line. And they don't give a fuck about the creative process. Now, the developers, those are the folks who actually create shit. Um, and the problem with the developers is that they cannot get their stuff out to market without the publishers actually funding, funding funds for them to go ahead and publish and distribute. The, the one thing that makes EA evil for a lot of people who know is the fact that they put developers out in the cold. And they have built their fucking company by doing that. They built their company around that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And that's 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 what makes them evil. All right. Okay. Now, um, with that, fuck EA. Let's go ahead and go on to the next. <laughs> go on to the next uh, uh, subject. Uh, speaking of the PS4, there is a big rumor, and this is actually backed up by a company called. Um, let's see here. Called Intellect Media. Which is a French uh, publishing and distribution uh, distribution company that um, uh, stated they had projected that the PS4 Evo was going to arrive during the first half of their 2016 2017 fiscal year, which falls between April 2016 to September 2000, um, 2016. Now, we've stated in previous other videos that when we covered uh, news on the PS4 Neo, that they have openly said that you can see Neo games on the shelves as soon as September of this year, which lends a lot of uh, credence to this particular room because if there are folks who are out there wondering when the PS4 Neo is coming out, I would have to say that it's probably going to come out close to the Christmas shopping season this year. Thoughts on that gentleman? Get your wallets ready if you're really serious about this. I'm not. I'm sorry. I can't be. It's just simply because it's like, all right, I do understand what they're trying to do, but I just feel that there will be complications to it. And they have to iron that out first. They, they have to understand that to jump on board with this with just without any just even thinking of the um, 
fucking consequences, it could really, really hurt them. What is that, Mr. Mouse? Um, being, again, you know, I've mentioned this before. Um, I got a PlayStation 4. So I am 100% against, you know, mid, um, mid generation upgrades. I, I, I just, to me, I'd say just go to the next generation, ninth generation. Because, like I previously stated before, um, eventually it's going to be just Neo games that, that are going to be released. I mean, it's just. I mean, I understand where PlayStation is doing this for, you know, I mean, with the um, PlayStation, excuse me, VR. And, but what really gets me is that if PlayStation VR is not an afterthought, you know, when they were in the process of making a PlayStation 4, they, they should have, uh, <laughs> you're distracting, man. <laughs> <laughs> The PlayStation 4, you know, they knew about the PlayStation VR. They should have just, <sighs> just made everything 4K compatible at that time. But, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm against it. I, I don't really think it's a good idea to do mid-generation um, upgrades because it seems like you're alienating those people, the early adapters. You know, both of you guys don't have a PlayStation 4, so it's all right with you guys. I mean, you, you held out. But um, for me, I mean, even though I did get my PlayStation 4 as a, uh, as a gift, whatnot, but still, you know, I mean, so I just, I don't like it. I'll just say it that way. It just, it, it's, I don't know, man. I'm not going to be voguing or macarena in front of my system. So VR for me is out. But as far as, you know, getting a uh, PlayStation Neo, I see no point if I'm not going to do the fucking VR. I just don't see the point in it. And well, if you're, you're going to keep your games, if, if you're going to start making your games only Neo compatible, then fuck you. It's just, well, I, I, I though, think that will be a step in the wrong direction. I think the thing is, though, a lot of console gamers. What, are they going to take fifty gigs to upgrade your uh, current PS4? In order a to lot of uh, a lot of console gamers have been wanting to, to uh, play their games in 4K, like the PC people can already do. So I, I understand that. I understand from that. But sucky I, games in 4K is still a sucky fucking. Game. Yeah. Let me just say this right now, as the resident PC gamer of the group. Uh, maybe in 4K uh, is an ex expensive endeavor and it yields very, very minimal fucking um, returns. Let me just say this right now. And, and I know there are people out there who probably readily disagree with me, but the monitor that I'm sitting in front of is a 22 inch monitor. <laughs> Why the fuck would I want it displaying in 4K? Number one, it's not even capable of doing that. But let's say I was sitting in front of my 65-inch TV that is 4K capable, going ahead and playing on that fucking thing. Um, even on this machine, my, my beefy machine, uh, it's not going to run 60 frames, stable, consistent, the whole fucking time I play it. Again, why the fuck would I want to do that? Okay, look, I... I, I I I think it's I think it's great if you're somebody who's into raw numbers and shit like that. That's grand. Guess what? That would be more useful being a fucking rocket scientist. To tell you the fucking truth, okay? But if you get your your rocks off on the raw numbers that your fucking console pushes, get fucking laid, okay? That's all I got to say. Look, the the, the PS4 Neo, all right. As far as it goes, it's it's inevitable. The upgrades, the Xbox One uh, upgrades, and everything else, that's also inevitable. Uh, the the VR thing, that's un unfortunately that's something that we can't avoid. But it's going to it's going to show up. Now, for the folks who who are later adopters, uh, like myself, like I said, I'm probably 
I, I know I'm going to have one in my entertainment center sooner or later. Uh, it may be, I don't know, uh, the day after they decide to discontinue fucking room manufacturing, but I'll have one in my fucking entertainment center sooner, sooner or later. Um, you know, the, the PS4 Neo, not that bad of, a, 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 of an option as far as being a late adopter. Um, but yeah, complications, as the theme said, would, is, is the least of, uh, of what they have to go ahead and they, they have to, to pay attention to. They've got to be really, really careful about stepping and treading into this, uh, into this particular realm because if they don't, they're going to piss off 40 million fucking established installed users. And the PS4 is yeah. already worldwide just... They they don't want to do that. That would be oh. that would be suicidal. That would be that would not only be suicidal. It would be, it would be so, epically stupid, on a cinematically, apocalyptic level. <laughs> I, I I will say this. If Shenmue Three becomes Neo only, Neo only, I will be furious. You're going to tell all the motherfuckers that kickstarted it that has the original PS4 that in order to fucking play it, you're going to have to get this other PS4. That's not going to happen. You know what is going to happen? Neo mode is going to be a fucking stretch goal for slacker backers. Well, I was going to say the same thing. I was going to mention that same thing. I mean, it's going to be Neo compatible. Uh, that's 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 going to happen, <laughs> whether or not it's neo uh, inclusive or exclusive or yeah inclusive. That's that's yeah. remains to be seen. Because when 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 is it supposed to come out? Twenty seventeen, twenty eight. Sometime this year. Uh, uh, or the neos maybe targeted this year. Yeah, no, 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 I'm talking about November twenty seventeen. Yeah. No, it'll 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 probably have the mode in there for it, uh, but yeah, that's gonna that's gonna require a little bit more fun. So, yeah. So okay, that that's that's just how that's gonna be. Uh, well, yeah, you, 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 the Neo Geo, yeah, how'd that work out? So why did you well, pick Neo for this name? Well, the you uh, the uh, you Suzuki's gonna say fuck that. We're just gonna make it PlayStation Four code. Then, then whoever buys a Neo can't fucking play it. Well, <laughs> base modes. So we'll see. I mean, it, like I said, uh, I here's here's the thing. No matter what time the Neo actually lands in the market, the first few months that it's going to be out in the market and consumers get a hold of it, it's going to be a fucking shit show. Uh-huh. I am calling it right now. Yeah, you're you're going to have established users who are going to be pissed off that are going to run into issues with games and yep. then also going to have new adopters who are going to be pissed off because they're going to be they're not going to be able to play like half the fucking digital library because yep. it has been patched to go ahead and work with yep. them and shit like that to me it's ridiculous it's really ridiculous for playstation to do this because like you said they're, they're, uh, playstation 4 already have an established library already and that are not Neo compatible. So before they even get the, the Neo mode, they got to make sure that the old games, the older library games will work on it. Yep. Yep. And I've covered that in other videos that uh, a lot of publishers and both big and small fucking hate that idea. Right. All right. All right. With that folks um, is, I think, is there any final thoughts on this uh, uh, on the Neo? I think we, nope. Yeah, I think we're, we're retreading old ground at this point. With that, thank you for joining us again. I'm sorry for the for the long break that we missed a week, but we're going to jump back into this. Real life happens, folks, and guess what? We don't live with our parents, so we got shit to take care of. All right? We're not in the fucking basement. Otherwise, all right? We're not in the fucking basement. Yeah, no. exactly. Okay? Um, if you're so kind. Thank you for spending the last 30 minutes with us. Click like, click subscribe, check out Theme's channel, check out Grand Mouse's channel. Again, we're the three middle-aged dudes. We're here usually every week, barring last week. I am the Reverend. The Theme here. And Grand Mouse 1.
once again for the benefits of common sense, logic, and gaming. Credits. Insert coin here. Insert coin here. Thank <laughs> you.